Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. Today we have hypoplasia and fluorosis, the two terms which we come across very oftenly in dentistry, but on an undergraduate level we are very confused about these two, hypoplasia and fluorosis. So when we check a patient's mouth and we see a white spot or a white mark, uh, for a UG student it's very confusing whether it be a hypoplasia or a fluorosis. So we need to understand the theory, the concept, the causes, the presentation of these two in order to uh, properly uh, diagnose condition that is a white spot or white lines. So this session is about understanding hypoplasia and fluorosis, its differences and the similarity, how it happens and on which age group it happens so all those things will be dealt in today's session so let's start hypoplasia and fluorosis there is one similarity that is both are hypomineralized structures okay so let's take one uh, example that is this be a tooth okay this is a tooth and we know mineralization cycle uh, each tooth has different mineralization phase. If it is molars, it starts from birth, and if it is a uh, second molar, uh, it starts from around two to three years. I am talking about uh, mineralization, okay, not eruption. Mineralization is different, eruption is different. Mineralization starts at very early time, so once the mineralization complete and two third of the root uh, formation complete, then only the tooth erupts into the oral cavity. So I'm talking about mineralization. Okay. So when mineralization happens, uh, so there is com uh, continuous deposition of uh, the calcium, the calcium and uh, phosphate crystals into the tooth. Okay. So this is uh, calcium and phosphate uh, crystals, and there are other crystals too. But mostly we say hydroxyapatite crystals. Calcium and phosphate are the uh, basic. Uh, minerals so this will be deposited in basically in an incremental line fashion but i'm just putting it as a dots okay so this is how naturally the mineralization happens but on some conditions this is not possible there are various reasons for uh, not uh, properly getting mineralized a tooth is not getting mineralized properly so we'll come to that later but just understand that the growth is not happening properly that is placia the growth or cell multiplication is uh, not happening properly that is hypoplasia is happening okay so hypoplasia means the mineralization mineralization is improper that is it is happening less than normal okay so the tooth is not properly mineralized. So there are areas where there is missing of ions. That is calcium and phosphate are missing. Now it is a hypomineralized tooth. Or we can say hypomineralized. So these areas will be hypomineralized areas which will be seen as a more of whitish color so these areas are hypomineralized color so these areas will be more opaque or more white compared to the normal enamel because the refractive index of enamel normal enamel refract index is 1.6 so when it is properly mineralized tooth okay so when the mineralization is less than normal the refractive index will be different okay so different refractive index score so it will not be 1.6 okay it will not be 1.6 so this is normal enamel this is hypomineralized enamel so this might be 1.3 or 1.2 or 1.1 so when we have two different refractive index on a same object okay so this area sorry 
this area the refractive index is 1.6 but this area the refractive index is 1.2 or 1.3 it is different anyway it is not normal so these two will be seen as different colors okay so this is normal tooth color that is uh, this 1.6 will be normal enamel a slight yellowish color but this will be more opaque because of difference in the refractive index okay so that is why we see white spots or white lines when there is hypomineralization because of the difference in refractive index so that is a concept hypomineralized structure so both hypoplasia and fluorosis are hypomineralized structures and they are seen as white lines or opaque areas okay so uh, the difference between hypoplasia and fluorosis is the reason okay why this is happening hypoplasia and fluorosis why fluorosis is happening hypoplasia is happening so that's the difference between these two because hypoplasia is a big thing okay so it's a big thing it has lots of things and one among the hypoplasia is fluorosis because there are many reasons for hypoplasia and one of the reason of hypoplasia is fluorosis. Hypoplasia can be caused due to the overconsumption of fluorine. That is how fluorosis happens. That is the difference between hypoplasia and fluorosis. The similarity is both are hypomineralized structures. But the difference is uh, one is happening due to the fluorine our consumption okay so that is a concept uh, behind these two now let's see what are the basic classification okay. so enamel hypoplasia can be basically classified as hereditary and environmental okay so this is hereditary sorry so i'm new to this uh, pen tablet that's why so much of error so hereditary and environmental these are the two broad classification of enamel hypoplasia okay so hypoplasia is nothing but as i mentioned it is the incomplete or defective formation of the organic enamel matrix so this hereditary has again three classification that is hypoplastic hypocalcified or hypomaturity so hypoplastic is nothing but when there is defective formation of organic matrix organic matrix is not properly formed whereas hypocalcification there is defective mineralization okay mineralization is different or defective and hypomaturity where the uh, defective maturation of matrix so in both, I mean all three ways, the enamel is not properly mineralized. One is because of the uh, matrix of defective formation of matrix. Next one is the defective mineralization of the matrix. And third one is defective maturation of the matrix. So matrix is not properly mineralized. So that is hereditary. Okay. But the next category is environmental. So environmental, we have many reasons they are one is nutritional deficiency uh, the second one is nutritional deficiency it could be due to uh, rickets rickets that is a uh, vitamin d deficiency then exanthematous disease that is uh, common uh, we call rash then due to the syphilitic hypoplasia syphilis is also a reason for enamel hypoplasia then hypoplasia due to hypocalcemia that is uh, improper uh, calcium concentration in the blood and hypoplasia due to birth injury so these are all environmental reasons for enamel hypoplasia and next one is a turner's hypoplasia or uh, local injury which affects uh, only on one tooth just one tooth okay this is due to local injury and the next one is dental fluorosis okay now you must have understood the difference between enamel hypoplasia and fluorosis 
so i already explained to you the mechanism of these two so dental fluorosis is one of the classification under environmental hypoplasia so this is due to the overdose of fluoride or over consumption of fluoride mainly during the calcification period calcification period of teeth so that is basically 0 to 7 years by 7 years up to second molar that is permanent second molar mineralization or calcification will be complete so if any person or any child who is consuming fluoride containing water that is more than uh, 1 ppm usually uh, fluorosis happens for more than 1 ppm suppose if a child consuming water that is 8 year old child is consuming water with more than 1 ppm the person will not be affected with fluorosis because by 7 years the teeth up to second molar that is 28 teeth will be completely mineralized okay so if it is milder or severe the effect will be significantly reduced after 7 years because teeth up to second molar will be mineralized by the age of 7 years that is how I am talking about mineralization not eruption so that is the basic difference between dental fluorosis and environment I mean uh, hypoplasia hypoplasia is a very broad thing so it has got hereditary and environmental classification one of the environmental reason is fluorine consumption that is known as dental fluorosis okay and also we have one more reason that is tetracycline uh, over consumption during the pregnancy also will result in enamel hypoplasia so all these reasons all these reasons will cause yeah that is hypo means less than normal less than normal mineralization this calcium and this calcium and phosphate deposition will be disturbed because of all these reasons so all these reasons may cause hypoplasia in teeth okay so that is the difference between hereditary and environmental hypoplasia so hope you understood uh, the difference between enamel hypoplasia and fluorosis and this uh, concept of refractive index and why uh, it is seen as opaque areas or white areas it is because of the difference between refractive index okay now let's see uh, the difference between or how do we differentiate a milder form of fluorosis and enamel hypoplasia i'm talking about only milder form of fluorosis okay so milder fluorosis and enamel hypoplasia why i am choosing milder fluorosis because if it is a severe fluorosis it will be obvious there will be pitting there will be brown staining there will be attrition there will be gross discrepancy the gross form change so milder fluorosis uh, and enamel hypoplasia is very difficult to differentiate so those criteria i am going to explain enamel hypoplasia so these criteria were given by uh, Russell so we can say that is it's Russell's criteria of differentiation okay so the Russell's criteria the first criteria is first criteria is the area affected okay so the area which are the area affected in fluorosis that is usually it affects on cusp tips or incisal edge so when you see a very milder form of fluorosis or enamel hypoplasia that is white areas if you are seen on cusp tips or incisal edge it will be fluorosis but uh, enamel hypoplasia that is non fluoride type 
it will be mostly seen on uh, smooth surface that is on the center of the tooth and it affects whole crown mostly sometimes whole crown or as a round shape okay so this milder fluorosis would be seen on cusp tip or incisal edge because why because we know mineralization is directly proportional to our fluorosis so mineralization starts or calcification starts from the cusp tips or incisal edge so fluorosis also will follow this pattern that is why fluorosis is seen on cusp tips or incisal edge the second one is a shape of lesion so we discussed about area now we have shape okay the so shape this is the most striking differentiating feature so in fluorosis the shape will be pencil lines okay so pencil lines because it follows incremental lines it will be like pencil sketches because it follows incremental lines because if this is a tooth okay you can see like this white lines whereas in hypoplasia it will be like this white area will be seen like this so this is fluorosis and this is hypoplasia okay so that is a shape here it will be round or oval shape so area shape after that we have demarcation how it is demarcated from the surrounding normal enamel that is the third one so we just cannot make out the demarcation it shades off imperceptibly into the surrounding normal enamel it just merges okay imperceptibly merges to enamel surrounding enamel you can't make out which is the border but here in enamel hypoplasia or normal uh, i mean non non fluoride enamel opacities you can clearly differentiate clearly differentiate between the sound enamel if, if this is a tooth okay this is a tooth and this is a tooth so it's not easy it will be some something like so the enamel and the hypoplastic areas will not be very much uh, differs in color or the borders i mean the boundaries are not very distinct you can't make out the boundaries of this one anyway this is more like a pencil uh, sketches still you can't make out the boundaries but here it will be a well circumscribed area you can very easily make out the boundaries okay so my drawings are not very good so that is how we can make out if it is a round oval shape where you can easily make out the boundaries it will be a enamel hypoplasia if it is pencil sketches and you are not able to make out the boundaries that will be fluorosis uh, after that uh, the next differentiating uh, feature is uh, the color okay the next differentiating uh, feature is a color color is uh, more like paper white uh, in fluorosis it is uh, more like a creamy yellow color so that is another striking feature and next one is the teeth affected teeth affected so this is mostly uh, teeth that 
calcify slowly teeth affected that is it's a concept uh, that is uh, fluorosis affects teeth which calcify slowly like uh, premolars or molars which takes lots of time to calcify around 2 to 4 years it takes to calcify from the beginning to end it takes 2 to 4 years so since mineralization is a slow process fluorosis is also a slow process so it doesn't occur on teeth which calcify fastly like central incisor mostly uh, uh, lower incisor or upper incisor so it is very rarely seen on uh, lower incisors okay so that is a concept it uh, present on teeth which takes lots of time to calcify or the teeth which calcify very slowly but enamel hypoplasia which can occur on any teeth because it has lots of reasons it could be a birth injury it could be a due to fever it could be due to syphilis or it could be due to nutritional deficiency so any reason uh, can happen on any tooth okay so that is uh, the teeth affected any tooth is affected okay so that is a concept uh, next uh, differentiating feature is a uh, uh, gross hypoplasia okay gross hypoplasia so that is sixth differentiating feature uh, that is milder fluorosis it is none there will not be any gross hypoplasia uh, enamel will be having a glazed appearance because it is a milder form of fluorosis severe form will be having gross hypoplasia uh, but um, in enamel hypoplasia the glazed surface will not be there it will be a rough uh, surface so the next one is detection how do we detect milder fluorosis and enamel hypoplasia under that light so let this be a tooth surface okay this be a tooth surface. this is a longitudinal section okay not cross section longitudinal section okay when we checking for fluorosis we should always use a tangent light okay tangent light the light direction should be at an angle but when we are checking for uh, enamel opacities our light direction should be perpendicular perpendicular and fluorosis tangent okay in other words a lesion which is seen on a perpendicular strong light will be a enamel hypoplasia and a white spot which is seen on a tangent strong light will be milder fluorosis okay so hope you understood the concept the area affected the cusp tip and incisor legend fluorosis because those are the areas where the first mineralization starts and it is having pencil sketches because it follows the incremental line patterns and the demarcation it is merges with the surrounding enamel there will not be any uh, clear cut boundaries or demarcation and it is having a paper white area and it seems on teeth which slowly calcify or longer duration calcification teeth like premolars and molars and gross hypoplasia is not there the tooth will be more of like glazed and we should use a tangent light tangent uh, that is a line of sight should be tangential to the crown uh, almost opposite in the enamel hypoplasia uh, the round oval shaped uh, white areas which is mostly on the center of the tooth or whole of the crown and you can easily uh, differentiate between the uh, white areas and uh, surrounding normal enamel and the color will be more like creamy yellow and it can affect any tooth and the uh, line of sight or the light projecting towards the crown should be perpendicular to the tooth surface so that was all about uh, the session this was more like a concept uh, clearing session mm. very broad thing it has got hereditary and environmental reasons and one of the environmental reason is fluorine and due to the over consumption of fluorine what causes is dental fluorosis okay so hope you remember this picture uh, enamel hyperplasia is a big thing and under the big thing there is a small classification 
that is fluorosis okay and uh, don't forget about the color and its reasons that is a refractive index how mineralization happens how hypoplasia is nothing but hypomineralization and the results criteria of myeloid fluorosis and enamel hypoplasia so that was all for today i'll come up with a new topic in oral pathology and industry and more thank you